You know my favorite part of August? The end of September. They even wrote a song about it because of how cool the spooky month is. And befitting this stupidly early mention of Halloween, this video is sponsored by the Grim Hollow Player's Guide. This ancient Kickstarter from last year's September brings you over a dozen player options, three of which they actually had me write and then I forgot about them. Mutated druids, self-centered monks, and stinky witchblood sorcerers are just scratching the surface of what we put in here. They even have a whole school of fully fleshed out blood magic, a booty load of magic items, player transformations, and more. You can pre-order the book and get more information on it with the link below. They're even nearing the fulfillment date. Oh look, quality content. If you will allow, I'd like to start this video with a simplified retelling of the story of Minos. Once upon a time, when the Greek gods had Wi-Fi and all played Civ 5 together, Poseidon had an island named Crete. I think he meant to call it Crepe Island, but he didn't know how to get the accent mark, so he just settled. A few turns pass, and a little guy named Minos fought his brother for the island. He begged Poseidon for a really sweet pony to ride into battle. But Poseidon gave him a giant fucking bowl instead and said, Hey, yeah, just cook this for me when you win. So naturally, the little guy won, but having a bull as a best friend was pretty cool, which pissed off Water Dad, so Poseidon did what any reasonable person would do when denied dinner. He cursed the guy's wife to fall in love with a big-ass bull. And for some reason, Daedalus, the artificer of the time, walked up to her and said, Hey, if you pay me enough money, I'll... Oh, well, he built a, f a, a fake cow for her to, ch to chill out inside, well... Let me put it in layman's terms. Minos didn't burn the bull, so Poseidon made it fuck his wife. And that gave him a little cowboy. The first cowboy. So to get rid of the nasty little thing, he ordered the same guy who made the sex cow to make a massive labyrinth to put the kid in so that nobody had to look at him. Fun fact, this crazy artificer had a son named Icarus. He was not a great role model. It's j just, just a weird bunch all around. Stay away from Crete if you're in the area during... When was this, 750 BC? Anyway, the guy's other son, Androgynous, died during a game of soccer, so to cope with dead son syndrome, he threw all the good boys and girls into the ball pit, so the bull boy can eat them. Homer was fucking insane. Anyways, let's look at the D&D ones. They act with the same amount of ambiguity in their personality and just run around as hulking, wild, sweaty, ripped beast men dunking on nerds. But thankfully for us, and for the rating of this book, their origins are different. Meet Baphomet. You've actually met him before, in another video. He recently tried his hand in sales, and his marketing campaign is hip, swingin', and on point. In the book it says he essentially hired a handful of cultists and told them to go sell the slogan, Return to Monkey, Return to the Wilds. Safari life can be yours for the price of civilization. So people ranging from hikers to fursuit furries scrambled into the nature preserves to live the free life. At the point of induction, they get to go through a maze. How exciting, it's like a little nature escape room with a eight foot tall bullman there to greet you. So half of these people get their IQ caved in by a great axe, and another third of them just get hard-ons for the cult life. But for the remaining few, Baphomet liked the like cut the of their jibs so much that he turned them into mini-me's. These sweet beefcakes look like an art commissioner's standby and smell like the actual art commissioner. They have the fascinating ability Labyrinthian Recall, where they can remember every scene from the movie The Labyrinth, recite the script, and also never get lost. One neat little detail is that their lack of personality makes sense for once. Minotaurs have returned so far back to nature brain that they function closer to actual bulls than people. Like most animalistic brains in giant bodies, if you look one in the eye or have your back turned to it or have a beating heart when you're near one, it's going to fly at you like a high-powered anime attack that uses its own momentum to gain momentum. Now that I'm not upset and we have two really cool stories with cool monsters, let's head on over to Ravnica and see how fun it'll be to try and play one. Oh, they're just gladiators with ancient heroes that they worship, okay. Oh, they got shrunk down three feet. And they took away the labyrinth so player minotaurs can get lost. Yeah, that, that's good. They got, bulls got horns. Give them a little poke attack and let them keep the bull rush feature so they don't notice that their body mass got cut in half. That's, that's fine. I was talking to a friend today about how playing a minotaur feels like eating oatmeal without any cinnamon or sugar. And he relates to minotaurs because he's handsome and smells bad. 
From my perspective, there are three solid narrative ways to approach this that would be super fun. The first, you are literally another Minotaur. Your mom got drunk, was in a cult, or was completely insane some other way, but somehow, you happened. You get to deal with being a hideous mistake of nature, and with it the fun of proving that your Minotaur can become so much more than its origin. The second, you are, or used to be, a cultist of Baphomet. Maybe you struggle with your new form and way of thinking, maybe you embrace it to the disgust of others, or maybe your body is a freak accident that you can't accept. You could play Fiona if she never fondled Shrek's balls, but was an ogre all the time anyway. And the third, which is mentioned as a possibility in the book, you've got a bull dad and a big titty cow mom. Minotaurs have the ability to become a standard race, they just don't care enough to form a unified culture. They probably still bang a lot though. And now you're an adventuring, bloodlusting, nine foot tall monster with a GPS. That's basically Minotaur.